we just sort of jumped in halfway through the building. Yes, okay. So basically just why are you guys yeah, protesting today? Yeah, 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 the reason that we held this protest today is because we propose we oppose the proposal to build a regional school in Henry Street. Um, we believe that the site is uh, inadequate, not just based on traffic and environmental concerns, but the cultural impact that this school will bring to the area. And it's a great area. I love Henry. It's, I feel like I'm in Australia, and, and I am, you know. But when I go to places outside this area, I see the Islamic culture, I see a lot of Muslims, and... I don't feel that I share much in common with them because they have a very different way of life and belief system. So, you know, this area is, you know, it should be protected. And the council is here that uh, in 2014 approved the two mocks. Uh, they really betrayed the community. And look, they've asked that the, the applicant, uh, Earth and Council, look at, sorry, College, to withdraw the application. But they said that they're not. They're going to amend it and uh, resubmit it. So. They've, uh, they're dug in, uh, you know, so the battle's not over, we're going to continue, continue on and just, uh, you know, you know, watch what council's going to do. We, we don't know much at the moment because the Mayor, John Fain, did call for a public meeting, but he hasn't given local uh, people uh, the right to have that forum. And it's very important, you know, because people, local people need to have a say and protests like this give people an opportunity and we heard from different speakers today that I've never met before but uh, they felt very passionate about protecting their area and wanted to get up and talk about why they oppose uh, the infiltration of Islam in Penrith. Yeah, so as you were saying with all the speakers that we've had here today, um, yes. a lot of them are from different areas so it's yes. sort of more turning into an issue that's bigger than just Penrith and it's about other yes. areas as well, would you say? You're absolutely right, it, it is, you know, and we'll try and get to any area that's, that's close to Sydney um, you know, because I consider all of Sydney my backyard and, and I do I have empathy and compassion for the Australian people that are seeing their suburbs change dramatically uh, and I understand, you know, just living in a compromised environment. It's all right for the politicians, you know, because we know that uh, these refugees are being resettled in the bulk of Western Sydney and the outskirts of Melbourne and uh, <laughs> the politicians, even the ones that live in those areas, their kids go to private schools, they live in gated communities, they don't have to live near this sort of compromised uh, arrangement. And Turnbull, there's no refugees being resettled. If Turnbull wants to make these grandiose statements like he did last December and said Australia's going to accept another 180,000 refugees in the next 10 years, well, dump them. Dump them at his place, uh, you know, in Darling Point. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of room there. He's got a big place and, you know, it's only natural, it's only fair that he should accept that cultural diversity in his area, but, but they won't, you know what I mean? They don't practice what they preach. Um, They've, they've betrayed the people. I, I don't know how else to put it, but it's just an act of betrayal. And they won't listen to people, and they're just dumping it in Western Sydney. And you know, it's good that people in Western Sydney are starting to um, to stand up and, and react and say we don't want this. So, what do you think the impact would be for a place like Penrith if the school was to be introduced? Yes. What would happen? It'd be similar to what's happened in Auburn, similar to what's happened in uh, Lakemba and Punchbowl other parts of Western Sydney that uh, over time more Muslims will move in here because they've got two mosques, one of them has already been built at the mud built, um, and then the school. They, it, you know, they would move into the area and like I said before that the principal has even, even said that, uh, you know, yeah, this uh, Muslim, more Muslim families will move into the area. So that's what the future holds if your school is approved. So locals have got to get out in the streets and contact their councillors and say, no, we don't want this. And if you don't listen to us at the next uh, local government election, um, we're not going to vote for you, we're not going to support you anymore. And so do you think this is more of an issue about extremism than anything? It's not all Muslims all together, it's more about not teaching people about extremism? Yeah, a absolutely, but I, I, you know, there are lots of good Muslim people, there's no doubt. And, you know, somebody like Sheikh Tahidi who's come out and said that there are inherent problems with Islam and Islam needs a reformation. And I do believe he's a genuine person and there, there are lots of, you know, good people. But unfortunately, the, the ideology, you know, it's just... It, it, it is. It is extreme, you know, when you've got uh, over 109 verses in the Quran teaching Muslims to uh, to basically kill the non-believer. There's plenty of passages. We don't have that parallel in the New Testament. Uh, it's completely different. It's not just a religion. It's a political ideology. They do seek domination. And there are radical, uh, you know, people within that uh, political ideology who do want to see Australia become an Islamic state. And I don't want Australia to become an Islamic state. Mm. Um, and lastly, just if this school does go ahead, what will be the next step for you guys? Will you be still fighting against it? Yes, absolutely. We will still fight. Um, we will, we will organise ourselves for the next council elections and stand candidates uh, and pursue that uh, avenue. And it will, if, if, the, if the school is approved, it's just another sign of betrayal. And it's a warning to locals, you know, stop, stop voting for them. If they're not listening to you, don't, don't reward them anymore. Don't reward dishonesty at the ballot box. 
uh, stand as councillors as yourself and get involved in local politics and it's very important. We have this welfare mentality in Australia, a lot of people just think, oh, I'll let somebody else do it. No, we're beyond that. We've got to get involved and take control of the situation and, and, and do what is necessary. Mm. Thank you You're so much. No worries, that's all right.